Hey everybody, I want to talk about uh, electric fields and symmetry, and using symmetry to simplify some, well, what might be more complex problems. Uh, so what's important is that if we have a charge configuration, the symmetries of the charge configuration are the same as the symmetries of the electric field. So we can use the charge configuration symmetry to figure out some things about the electric field. So let's do some examples just to see how this goes. Uh, let's look at this first set of charges right here. We have a plate of positive charge at the top and a plate of positive charge down at the bottom. Now, pardon that the drawing's not perfect. These are supposed to be pretty much equal and opposite uh, about the y-axis, or about the x-axis flipped. So we have two symmetries here. We have uh, reflective symmetry against the, uh, or across, I should say, the x-axis. If we flipped it, our charge would be the same. That means if we flip it, our electric field has to be the same. So anywhere along this line, if I were to sketch out the electric field, if I were to guess that the electric field were this, well, that can't be right because if we flip our charge symmetry, that would have to flip the electric field, which means it would have to be this. And that can't be the case because when we reverse it, it's the same. The only way that we can have reflective symmetry here is if our electric field points somewhere along this axis. So our electric field has to either point to the right or maybe it points to the left. But the vertical components have to cancel. So there's one little bit of symmetry. We also have symmetry about the y-axis. We can make the same argument. Uh, if we reflect about the y-axis, the um, electric fields or sorry, we get the same configuration, which means our, our electric fields have to, uh, well, basically it means that there can't be any horizontal component of the electric field on this axis, which means our field has to point either up or directly down on this axis. And we can combine those all together at this point in the center. Oops, just deleted my axes at this point in the center. At this point in the center, uh, we have horizontal and vertical symmetry. And the only way that our electric field can be the same when flipped both horizontally and vertically is if the electric field is zero. So that means we have no E field. Uh, let's look at this next charge configuration. We have a ring of uh, negative charge. Now, if we look at this, we have rotational symmetry about our center. So the, on, so the only way, what, sorry, that means that our electric field has to be rotationally symmetric about the center. If we rotate the electric, if we rotate the charge, we get the same charge, so we'll get the same electric field on rotation. That means our field everywhere has to be radially symmetric, or rotationally symmetric. So it's going to either point out or point in, but we know that since it's a negative charge, our field lines are going to point in towards it. Anytime we have a radially symmetric charge, we have a radially symmetric electric field. But that also means right at the center here, our electric field again has to be zero, because if it pointed in any direction, um, it wouldn't be able, it wouldn't preserve that symmetry under rotation. Let's take a look at this X of positive charge over on the right. We have we have a lot of different symmetries here. We have symmetry about the this line here, symmetry about this line here, symmetry about this line here, reflective symmetry about this line here, which means our electric field um, has to be uh, has to be the same among any reflection there. That again tells us that uh, the components of the electric field have to cancel along these lines. The only way we can get an electric field that's the same under a reflection is if it points along those lines. And since it's a positive charge, we know it's going to point away. The other components have to cancel, or the components along, um, along these lines of symmetry have to cancel in this case. We could do that anywhere along those lines of symmetry. Here, we have something that is symmetric in only one way only symmetric about this x equals 0 line, or y-axis, which means our electric field 
is only symmetric about this x equals 0 or y-axis. That, again, means along this y-axis, our electric field has to point either straight up or straight down. I think it's going to point down when it's above our charges, because the electric field points towards negative, and up when it's below our charges. So I expect it will be something like that. Uh, and the field shape, if I were to actually sketch out the field lines, I think are going to be something like, like this. Let's look at a few more interesting examples. Let's go down here. Here we have a positive plate on the left and a negative charge on the right. This isn't symmetric about a reflection, but it is what we call anti-symmetric. If we reflect it and we switch the charge, if we were to reflect this positive plate and reverse the charge, it would be the same. So we can't say exactly the same things that we could about the electric field as before. But because it's anti-symmetric, we can still figure some things out. We know that this positive plate is going to produce an electric field that points away from the positive plate. I'm going to draw it as a red arrow here. Um, and if we were to let's ignore this negative plate for now, let's pretend that we flipped our positive plate across that axis of symmetry and ended up with positive plate over here. Well then we know from symmetry that the electric field from that right positive plate would have to po point to the left with the same magnitude as this arrow here. But um, since this is anti-symmetric, since we actually have a negative plate over here, the field produced from this negative plate would be the same as this except reversed. So our net electric field is just going to be the field from one of our two plates, but doubled. We have a rightward field from our leftward plate, and we also have an equal rightward field from our rightward plate. So our net field has to point to the right. Our net field is going to be something like that in green. Pardon my messy arrows, my green arrow. And we can use this uh, to figure out the electric fields for more complicated arrangements. Here we have a positive, weirdly shaped electric field and a negative, weirdly shaped electric field. But there is some symmetry about, uh, well, there's rotational symmetry here um, if we rotate 180 degrees about our center point. So since it's anti-symmetric, in rotation by 180 degrees, we can use that to figure out the electric field. We know that the positive plate is going to produce an electric field that goes this way. And because it's anti-symmetric about rotation, a negative plate has to produce an equal magnitude field in the same direction. So our net electric field at this origin is going to be something like that, that green arrow. We can also combine these symmetries to figure out more complicated electric fields. Here in this rightmost diagram over here, we have two negative plates. Here in this rightmost diagram over here, we have two negative plates that are symmetric, this one and this one, and a positive and a negative plate that are anti-symmetric. If we wanted to find out the direction of the electric field at the origin, well, we can think about the, symmet the symmetries that are involved and combine them. The two negative plates are going to cancel out at the origin because there's that rotational symmetry. This, or the two large negative plates, that is. The smaller negative plate and the smaller positive plate are anti-symmetric about rotation, which means they'll produce equal electric fields. So since my negative plate produces a field that goes towards it, my positive plate produces an equal field that goes towards that negative plate. So the net electric field is going to be in that direction. It's just a little bit on using symmetries to solve for electric fields. That's all. Bye.